Hi, my name is Philippe Longchamp. I am uh, from Bilingual Montessori School of Lund in Sweden. I'm originally from Quebec in Canada. And um, this is my co-author, Charlotte Graham. Yeah, I'm Charlotte Graham, originally from Norway, now living in Sweden. Uh, I also work at uh, BMSL, Bilingual Montessori School of Lund. And we are uh, the author of 40 Frame as a Pedagogical Tool for Holistic Active Learning, a case study from Bilingual Montessori School of Lund, Sweden. In our paper, what are we basically trying to demonstrate? We're trying to demonstrate how you use 40 Frame in your teaching uh, in conjunction with other subjects, like for example, history, how you use a holistic approach to teaching. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to show the, the benefits of that. Exactly. And then we try to explain also how, how multidisciplinary teaching and how we can like work as a team to integrate more different school subjects mm -hmm. in order to basically zoom out and show our students the big picture, mm -hmm. like how the different pieces of the puzzle will make sense in the end when they start to make basically mm -hmm. these, these connections, not only the physical ones, but the connections in their brains and their minds. These are the things that we need for the future. These are, these are the fruitful parts of the creative process. Mm. This is what we think our pupils need to learn for their future and for the whole planet's future. Exactly, yeah. So in our research, we made a case study. We are talking about some type of device that was invented by two students, Amelie and Matilda. We also talk about the two different um, uh, prototypes that won the Swedish contest in Lightning Imagination. Mm. And of course, we compare this to the type of competition that is taking place in Korea every year, the IMSCC. Mm. And we argue that this type of learning is the one that sticks the most. It's the type of learning that is sustainable because again, we are not focusing on the facts, but on the creative process and we measure success in progress. Mm -hmm. And using these tools, these pedagogical tools, is a great way to nurture creativity. And that's what we want to do in a Montessori pedagogy. And we also argue in our paper that the whole Swedish curriculum is Montessori inspired. Mm -hmm. We also talk about how school leadership can help and facilitate this type of teaching or this type of approach. Mm. Yeah, by not putting uh, hindrance in the way for the teachers, for the things they want to try. Mm. Mm. And also to encourage them to work collaboratively. Mm. And also it's not only about the material, it's also about time management mm. and also the, the example we set for the the students and, and these contests are always team building activities so mm. we think that this is another thing that is extremely important for mm. the future mm. our paper states that um, working collaboratively is the way to get new ideas absolutely and our students were interviewed in our paper and we encourage you to read it and they often say that the best ideas come from mistakes mm. in the creative mm. process mm. so Amelie and Matilda claim that while they were trying to build some type of drill, they ended up creating some type of hybrid, mm. something that was inspired by an, a class in history they've had about the agricultural revolution. So they took an old invention from the 1700s, the, the seed drill from Jethro Tull, and basically took something from the medieval time, the old Dutch windmill, mm -hmm. they merged them together while respecting the, the guidelines of mm. the contest, and by creating this type of hybrid, they demonstrated how bit by bit, they were making connections between the different things mm -hmm. they've learned in history and in geography. And to a certain extent, with another example, even subjects as home, home economics. economics. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because some students, actually the, the winning team this year in Sweden, they created a device called the wind powered auto cooker. It's um, a food processor, really. Exactly, mm. like a wind-powered food process mm. for poorer countries. Mm. And again, there is no stupid idea. What we want in a creative, like, process is people thinking outside the box. Mm. So you can see that happening, can you? As they sit there and think about. It. Yes, I think because most people are industrious. Mm. They they want 
the things they build to lead to something. And we can observe that their creative thinking does, is not limited to the objects they built. Their critical thinking skills are developed, their creativity is developed. So you see basically the future, the companies of the future taking shape in the minds of our students. Mm. And we argue in our paper that, it, well, it's hard to, to demonstrate in a quantitative way, but when we look at the progress they make, if we measure success and progress, we really see that this type of holistic approach, active learning approach, generates results that are incredibly positive. Can borderless connectivity lead to boundless creativity? Absolutely.